Good morning. Welcome to uh, Stop Diabetes Insight. I am Beth Grant with the American Diabetes Association. And I am Carol Dixon, Senior Manager of Mission Delivery with the American Diabetes Association. Thank you for joining us for the November segment of uh, Stop Diabetes Insight. Uh, welcome. November is American Diabetes Month, and we have a lot of things going on for American Diabetes Month, so we're just going to jump right in. Um, actually, we, the American Diabetes Association is one of three charities that is um, in the running for $50,000 from the Fitbit organization. So you can dedicate your steps for um, the time from November 9th, which was yesterday, it's already started, uh, from November 9th through November 20th. And um, if all of the people that have dedicated their steps to the American Diabetes Association is the largest number of steps, then the organization will win the 50,000, or no, I'm sorry, it's five hundred thousand dollars wow so that's much better <laughs> yeah um, the, the total prize uh, from Fitbit they are giving away a total of one million dollars so the three organizations awesome. there is a first second and third place so first place is five hundred thousand dollars and we need that in our mission to exactly stop diabetes. Come on, people. that'll be great <laughs> so you can dedicate your steps from November 9th through November 20th to um, the American Diabetes Association. If you already have a Fitbit, uh, just go on. Uh, for me, it was easiest just to register it online. Um, you sign into your account and then you can choose to become part of the challenge and you just pick the American Diabetes Association. Um, you can earn extra steps each day if you post a picture of your steps for the day. Yeah, so cool. when I when I meet my 10,000 step goal, um, if I tweet that out, then I will earn an extra thousand steps oh, for the day. Yeah. So good that's to know really that's neat. it's just a fantastic way. Um, yeah. You know, incorporating that with American Diabetes Month is that works great for us. So <laughs> if you have those capabilities, then go right ahead. Um, you can actually participate if you do not have a Fitbit. Just down the app onto your smartphone oh. and then there is um there's also an area within your active uh steps where you can put those two together to talk to each other so as long as you have your phone with you and it is keeping track of your steps then your steps will count in that way too oh so, i didn't know that that's good to yeah know so there's a little I don't extra have a yet but i yeah i can certainly right do it so you can phone. exactly you can work with us too and help us yeah. um, get to that goal of you know the most steps that's right. So that's really fantastic news. Um, let's get in. Sorry, I had a real quick little uh, picture of that too. It's get get fit for a good cause. They're calling it fit for good, uh, and I think that that is the hashtag also that you would use when you're uh, tweeting out and sharing on your social media. Fit for good. Fantastic. Thank you, Fitbit. Um, let's talk a little bit more about American Diabetes Month. The theme this year is Eat Well America and Stop Diabetes. There are lots of things that are going on in social media um, through the American Diabetes Association and then, you know, some of the stuff that we're do doing here local. Would you like to share some of the local stuff that sure. we're doing? Um, one of the things that we um, have done is we work with Indie Boomer Magazine and Boomer TV. And so they have done an article for us in Indie Boomer Magazine for this month. And then Grace Trahan, um, um, did a cooking segment with us that will air on Boomer TV on November 22nd and 29th. And that airs in the morning on Sunday mornings, Wish TV on at 1030. And so Chef Tony Hanslitz, he's an award-winning chef. Mm -hmm. He was the one that prepared our food for us. And Mary Snell, with a dietitian with Marsh Supermarkets, she's the one who reported on the nutritious as aspects of the food. Sorry, I'm having trouble this morning. <laughs> Um, and so I'm excited to see this show. So we've got this this veggie turkey chili, this yummy, delicious recipe that is... And this is one of the recipes that is available for, for download. That's right. Um, we have several recipes that are available for anybody to download, but the um, turkey veggie chili is one of them right. that is kind of a, a focus for us, you know, when we're talking about 
what are you going to do with your leftovers yeah. after Thanksgiving? What are you going to do with the leftovers? Football season, exactly. tailgating. It's chilly season. It's chilly season, exactly. It's budget-friendly, um, delicious. So diabetes.org um, slash recipes is where you can get that recipe, many thousands of more recipes. Yes, it's fantastic. So each week um, there are recipes that are focused for um, the Eat Well America. Um, from the 1st to the 7th was uh, the breakfast recipes. And then week two, which we are in right now, there are lots of snack recipes out there. Um, week three will feature lunch because that is our National Healthy Lunch Day, November 17th, which we'll talk about real quick. Um, then for week four, from the 22nd through the 28th, there are some dinner recipes that are out there. And then the 29th through December 5th, special occasion foods. Um, you know, thinking of, again about uh, Thanksgiving. And there will also be several recipes available for your Thanksgiving meals. So um, stay tuned. And all of that, again, is available um, diabetes.org um, slash recipes. But another great resource for you is um, diabetesforecast.org slash ADM. And there are a lot of information about um, American Diabetes Month out there. Uh, you know, the recipes are just the beginning. So just some things to kind of help you. There are lots of tips. Yes. Some of the other tips that we have are on storing leftovers and then refrigerator and freezer storage of leftovers or of, of fresh foods too. Um, also healthy food swaps. Yes, that's Yeah, so we have a, a lot of really interesting. Oh, and um, one of the other ones that I really like is the healthier way to use canned foods because we know that a lot of canned vegetables are higher in sodium. Right. And so one of the tips is to rinse them off before you use them. Oh, And okay. so that gets rid of the extra sodium and so That's sometimes fantastic. canned goods are less expensive. And so but there's a whole tip sheet on using canned and frozen foods. That's great. Okay, so let's get into the healthy, uh, the National Healthy Lunch Day, November 17th. Um, you know, we encourage everyone all the time to eat healthy. But, you know, this is a day that we are drawing special attention to, your healthy lunch. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. And again, we also have um, tip sheets available for this. Right, um, packing a lunch, <coughs> making a healthier sandwich. Um, what can you take for smart snacks along with your Very lunch? Good. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that we can do out there, uh, you know, just to, to change up your lunch. Just try something different and it doesn't have to be a major overhaul. It can just right. be one of those quick swaps that we talk about. Um, to, to just change things up a little bit. So um, again, that is November 17th. And that too, you know, we're encouraging people to take pictures of your healthy lunch mm -hmm. and, you know, tweet those out. Um, you can use hashtag uh, diabetes month and um, hashtag healthy lunch. Um, again, the slogan for healthy lunch day is lunch right with every bite. So make sure every bite counts for a healthy lunch. Um, and again, here and here are some of our, you know, our social media where you can tag us the uh, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram, we are AM Diabetes IN. And if anyone has trouble in posting that on their social media for some reason, um, they can always email the photos to either you or to me, right. and then we can post them for you. We want to see your photos. We do. Please. We'd like to see everyone get involved with this because it's really exciting. We did this in May when we had our Get Fit, Don't Sit Day, and it was so fun to see what people were doing. So right. please, send us your photos. We'd like to see it. All right. Well, we will be right back with our special guest, Susie King. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her Schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim 
at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. We have our special guest with us today, Susie King, and Susie is the Diabetes Prevention Coordinator for the Indiana State Department of Health. Tell us a little bit about your job, Susie. Oh my gosh, I'm involved in so many things. Um, there are three main components to my position, and the fact that I try to go out and create pre-diabetes awareness. Um, I'm involved with getting diabetes prevention programs up and running in the state and then trying to help the organizations that do the diabetes prevention program um, help them to promote it to get participants involved with their individual programs statewide. Okay well we're excited to have you here because Thank diabetes you. prevention you know with with 1.9 million Hoosiers having prediabetes is something that we need to attack and you are the front person for that <laughs> in the state. So. Um, um, I'll let's, do my best. <laughs> so let's talk about um, what you do in the pre-diabetes world. Let's start off with well, what is pre-diabetes anyway? That's a great starting question. <laughs> what is it? Um, pre-diabetes is basically when your body has higher than normal blood sugars, but they're not quite high enough to be considered full-fledged diabetes. Um, a lot of times your physician will say, you have impaired fasting glucose, or they'll say you have insulin resistance. Um, sometimes they'll say, you know, you have borderline diabetes or a little touch of sugar. Yeah. Those are key words to be listening to the healthcare provider to know if you have prediabetes. And so if you have that diagnosis of prediabetes, um, what do you do next? Um, well, basically, um, <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about the number of people who okay. have prediabetes mm -hmm. and then how is it diagnosed? Okay, okay. thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Call <laughs> me off guard. <laughs> well, um, we have a ton of people with prediabetes out there, and this is going to be a scary picture. Um, we, this is the national picture of what prediabetes looks like. Um, as you can see, we have 86 million people out there with prediabetes. That's a huge number. Oh, it is huge. And let me give you a little understanding. Um, back in the year 2010, we had 79 million people. So just in the last few years, we've increased another 7 million. And uh, we don't see any end in sight to this growing epidemic. So we're in, you know, Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let me give you a little understanding of what it looks like from our Hoosier state. Um, let's consider 6.5 being 6.5 million as a population in our Hoosier state. Okay. Um, out of that, as you had previously mentioned, 1.9 million have prediabetes, or an estimated 1.9 million have prediabetes. Um, the scary part of all this is nine out of 10 people don't even know they have prediabetes. That is very scary. Mm -hmm. Yes, because if you don't know it, there's nothing you can do to fix it. Right. Okay, so, but what's going on in your body when you have prediabetes? When you have prediabetes, um, 
your body is um, basically insulin, which is a hormone your pancreas makes. Um, and what insulin does, it helps to move the food, the energy from the food you're eating to your cells in your body. And in turn, those your body cells are utilizing it to perform daily necessary functions. Um, with prediabetes, your insulin is starting to lose the effect it should have on your body. Um, and this change in your system allows your blood to get a little bit thicker because it's okay. slowly increasing blood sugar because it's not being absorbed into your cells like it used to. And this thicker blood in your body, unfortunately, this is the very, very scary part. Um, this is what causes those strokes and heart attacks. Okay. How frightening. Absolutely. And here's a couple other things. Something to keep in mind, the good news with prediabetes, um, this you can reverse. That is key. That is key message today. You can reverse prediabetes. However, once you get diabetes, that is irreversible. You cannot reverse it. Right. Once you have it, you have it. You can manage it really well, but you never get rid of it. That is there very is true. There's no cure for type 2 diabetes. And that's a long road, and who wants to deal with that? Um, let's just say, you know, hey, your healthcare provider um, said you have prediabetes. Let me just give you this instance. And let's say you don't do one thing about it. Well, you know what? In about five years, you can consider yourself having full-fledged diabetes. So the time is to act now. Okay. Well, what are some signs and symptoms people might need to look out for? To Very good uh, point. Some of these signs and symptoms are not that easily uh, detected. Um, but what somebody might experience or exhibit some of the si same signs as diabetes, for instance. Okay. Um, you're always tired. You're not feeling like you have received enough rest. Um, always hungry, although that's always my problem. <laughs> um, you might um, have sudden weight loss. You, you just, you're not even trying to lose weight and suddenly those pounds are dropping off and you can't explain why. Um, here's another big one. You're always thirsty. Always, always thirsty. And of course, when you're thirsty, you're always having to use the restroom, right? So anyways, those are just a few of the things to be on the lookout for. Okay. Well, so you've just been to the doctor and the doctor has said, Susie, you have prediabetes. What do you do next? Good question. Um, and you know, this is not a mystery to any one of us. <laughs> um, it really comes right back down to eating right and exercising. Yep. Um, physical activity, is a wonder drug. Um, and when I talk about actually uh, eating properly, you need to keep in mind when you're building a plate of food, okay, you need to put more fruits and vegetables on that plate, um, obviously for their nutrition, but you know, the key is um, there's less calories and carbohydrates in fruits and vegetables, um, and you're get, getting your nutrition as well. And maybe plate size. You know, historically our plates have grown over the years. So using mm -hmm. maybe a nine or 10 inch plate. Exactly. As opposed to the big plates that we use today. <laughs> so you're saying put maybe half of that plate as the fruits and vegetables? Absolutely. And I always say avoid the trough. <laughs> <laughs> or shall I say avoid going back to that trough over and over again. Some of these um, buffets, oh my gosh, they are very dangerous. Don't tempt yourself, you know? <laughs> And then as far as physical activity, you know, a half hour a day, um, that's all we're asking for. Um, and that does not all need to be at one point in time. It can Good be point. 10 minutes before you go to work. Um, you can take the dog for a brisk walk before you leave. Um, and then when you get to work, you know, you're gonna have a 10 minute break somewhere or lunch, right. go out, walk that parking lot. And then, you know, I know we all have very, very busy lives and, um, you know, you might have to run to the grocery store to grab dinner uh, to fix, you know, take a couple extra walks around the perimeter of that store. That helps. Um, and everything counts. And let's not forget mall walking. Right. When it's not so nice out there, um, yeah. that's a great opportunity to get some exercise in. Um, it might be a little expensive, but you know, hey, um, you're able to get it in. Um, Just general so. movement throughout the day. Stand up when you're on the telephone. 
Just try not to sit so much. Right? Yeah, walk and talk. That's my favorite. Okay, we need to take a quick break. Okay. And when we come back, we will talk more about prediabetes and how to manage it. Thank you. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 El Dorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy duty suspension to support her Schwelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Welcome back. We are going to finish our discussion about diabetes prevention with Susie King from the Indiana State Department of Health. Susie, what are some risk factors that people need to be aware of? Well, there are quite a few risk factors, um, but in the essence of time, I'll just cut it down to a few major ones. Okay. Um, first of all, if you're over the age of 45, um, that's a risk factor. Um, second of all, if you have a first degree relative with diabetes, for instance, it could be a, a mother or a father, okay. brother, sister, um, and I hate to mention this next one because I always fight it, but if you're a little thicker around the waist, <laughs> um, you know, that could cause for concern. Um, also, if you're a female and if you have given birth to a baby that's nine pounds or more, um, or maybe your physician told you you have gestational diabetes, um, you're at high risk to develop prediabetes. Okay. So are there programs out there that can help people with prediabetes? Yes, there is. This is Perfect. awesome. Um, there is the National Diabetes Prevention Program. It is a CDC program, the Center for Disease Control Program, and it is a year long, okay? Now, I know you're probably all like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> a year is a large commitment. But you know what, if you are really, really wanting to take this seriously and make mm -hmm. solid, sticking lifestyle changes, this is the program for you. That one year of time can save many years down the road oh, of yeah. problems and complications. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so this is another option. If you can do all this on your own, great. Um, you know, more power to you. But some of us need a little help. Um, let me explain a little more about the nuts and bolts of the National Diabetes um, Prevention Program. Like I said, it's one year long. The, the first six months of the program, uh, you are meeting with a group weekly for one hour, okay? And then the second six months of the program, you are uh, meeting at least, and I say at least once a month uh, for one hour as well. Um, these programs are taught by a trained lifestyle coach and what they do is they are trying to assist the group in identifying barriers to healthy eating, barriers of why you can't get that physical activity in, um, and doing some problem solving. 
Um, they will also do some goal setting with you as well. So all of this is part of the plan. And this program, there's only two, two major goals for this whole program. The first one is to lose five to seven percent of your body weight. And okay. you know what? For five to seven percent of your body weight, we're talking for a 200 pound person. That's only 10 to 14 pounds. Yeah. That seems that's pretty so doable bad. to me. Right, right. Um, that's goal number one. Number two is to get at least 30 minutes of physical activity a day times five times a week. So 150 minutes of physical activity per week. That's not even every day. Um, so they are very, very doable goals. Okay. Um, how do people find out about the program? Well, that's a great question, and I am here to answer. Um, there, here in the Indianapolis area, um, we have the YMCA of Greater Indianapolis that is offering this program. Um, you can call this main number and they can give you the details of the times, place um, for the program. Uh, I'll read it to you in case you have a pen and paper in hand. 317-266-9622. Another Indianapolis uh, organization offering the Diabetes Prevention Program is the Indiana Minority Health Coalition. And you can contact, contact them directly at 317-920-4951. And then, of course, feel free to always contact myself, Susie King, at the Indiana State Department of Health um, at 233-7343. Um, now, I just want to mention, not just in Indianapolis, um, we have diabetes prevention programs just going to ask you about that. statewide. Okay. And actually, the number of programs is increasing statewide. So um, if you want to get on our uh, Indiana State De uh, Department of Health website, we keep it updated on, on the website okay. or just give me a call. Um, I'd be happy to help. Okay. So as I'm sitting here listening to you talk about it, can you tell me what a typical class might look like? If, if I'm going in for the first time, what would I expect? That's a great question. Everybody wonders. Um, this class, let me just explain the location. Um, it might be at a YMCA if it's at a different organization. Um, it depends on where they have worked out the details, but they could have it at your employers. Um, okay. At your employer. That's great. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, so, you know, you would have to call and get details. But as far as the specific class, Carol, if you were to walk in, um, they will weigh you, very okay. first thing, because we need to measure the results okay. of losing weight. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we but take off all the shoes and <laughs> yeah. everything you can, jewelry. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so they will weigh you, and then they'll, they'll get right into the topic of the week. Um, okay. And, and really, it's a group process that helps to form um, you know answers and and you'll hear what other people do to fight the barriers and and you know make this so program a supportive work. network there with the yes. other people do yep. you receive any kind of um, literature or books or anything oh, yes. like that to help and you will be tracking your food okay. sorry yeah. but we gotta know we gotta know <laughs> if you're eating those oats. and I guess we have to be honest yes we? we have to be <laughs> honest as well they will okay. have you track during the week how much physical activity you're getting and what you are putting into your mouth. So, okay. yeah. and, and then do they look at that when we come back? So yes. It's kind of graded? Yes. Okay. Well, we don't want to say great. That's a okay. nasty right. word. But um, <laughs> they will advise you on different things you could be doing. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have some nasty habits you're trying to break. So, you know, the lifestyle coach really, um, like I said, they are trained to really help you out. Yeah. They're there for the person. And the support. Right. Yes. Exactly. That's really cool. Um, what else is going on at the Indiana State Department of Health? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a wide question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. tell people a little bit about ISDH. Oh gosh. Um, because a lot of people may not know. They know there's this this big entity out there mm -hmm. um, and we hear about it on the news, but what do you really do there? Well, you know, there are a lot of different departments in the Indiana State Department of Health. Um, I'm the cardiovascular and diabetes section. Um, I have a counterpart that works on uh, programs for diabetes and getting healthcare providers to um, get their patients in for diabetes education. I also have a counterpart that is working on um, cardiovascular 
uh, initiatives. Mm -hmm. And you know, w and one big thing is we're trying to get more community health workers involved um, with all of these health initiatives because I don't know if you know this, but there are quite a few. There's there's big. Fewer and fewer physicians out there. Right. Um, and we need help. We rely on community health workers a lot. Well, how does someone, if they are interested in becoming a community health worker, who should they contact? Um, well, right now they are formulating a plan um, for community health workers. Um, I would say for right now they could contact myself and, and I can you get can you. direct them from correct. there. Okay. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. perfect. All right. Well, we've talked about a lot of different things today. Um, Happy American Diabetes Month, everyone. Uh, let's pay attention to your numbers and learn how to manage well. And if you have prediabetes, let's get out there and do some prevention. And so happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you back in December. And good health. Thanks.